We got up at 5.30. I checked my emails. In the morning, I get a daily devotional sent to me by um, a pastor friend of ours. I just look up the verse in the Bible and it helps me start my day. From there, I usually just go downstairs, feed the dogs. At about 6.30, 6.45, we left for the airport. Chad and Mirko are two people that I work with that helped organize this event. We got there, there was only one person in line. We were there super early. So we pretty much either kind of caught up on rest that we didn't get the night before there or on the way to Kansas City. We'll be on the ground in Kansas City about 30 minutes. Because I'm a Christian skateboarder, we get people interested in me coming to their church and doing demos. 11,000 flyers, and then... The person who contacted us from the church's youth ministry, his name was John Perkey. We went to a shop, a skate shop that I've never even been to. And then right when we walked in, they're like, you know, Jamie Thompson's coming? I'm like, yeah, he's coming. So, Definitely a blessing to have him there trying to, you know, do everything he could to make our stay comfortable. So, I mean, people were like, really ex really excited, so... It's always good when the course is, you know, good. That wasn't the case here, though. The, the course was all well made, but it wasn't designed in a way that there was that many options. Well, first I'd check the clock to see what time it was, and then I thought how much time we had to try and change anything we could, because I uh, definitely needed some changes for me to even do a demo. We made some things that weren't skatable skatable, and made some new obstacles. We made the best of the scenario, and it worked out good, and that was almost a fun project in itself. It was actually a better case than going there and it being good, and us not ever meeting the people who helped us rebuild it. After like every trick, you had to rest for a few minutes because of the cold air, you know, it doesn't supply your lungs with enough oxygen. And one push across the course, you're wheezing. They told me there was going to be a lot of kids and they kept kind of warning us. I really never even think about that until I'm there. And then sometimes it is pretty overwhelming when you actually get there and you see how many kids there are. And then you get out of the van and then you're all on your own. They're all there to see you. I felt good about going up and you know speaking. I haven't done it in a while and I just kind of wanted to get my mind right to do it. There's a sea of kids, but if you're not looking at each kid in particular, you can't even really acknowledge that they're all there looking at you. Thanks for trekking all this way to freeze and uh, watch me have a hard time in the cold. I felt that when I had found what I think is the meaning of life, I wanted to let everybody know that I think that this is what it's all about. And for a while there, though, I was really, I was really questioning. What, what the Lord's plan was for me. I felt like I was humbled. I think it's, it's a great way to reach kids, tell them that, you know, there's more to their life than skateboarding. I just want to thank you all. Thank you, God bless. Thank The next part is really easy. You sign autographs for two hours. Never ends. After speaking, it felt really good. I felt really energized. I know of some spots in town, so I'd like to go and see if we can try and skate around town and keep the energy going. It was definitely freezing and desolate, but we just kind of skated and turned some whatever into skatable objects, and it was kind of fun. It ended up getting into like 3, 3.30. We just had to call it a night. We got into the hotels probably like 4, 4.30. From there, I checked my email, called my wife, let her know I was okay, and then we just went to bed. Three to four hours sleep <laughs> for the second day in a row, but I'll try and catch up tonight.